Hi, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. Today's video is the first in a long series covering the topic of digital audio theory from uh, my textbook. You can find all these code examples on DigitalAudioTheory.com. You can see all the chapters over here. We're going to start in Chapter 2 with Programming Example 2.1.3 on complex vectors and complex numbers. So complex numbers are found all throughout the digital audio world. We can represent filters with complex numbers, even the frequency response of a digital audio signal. And complex numbers are easily visualizable as a vector. And these can be represented in two different ways mathematically. One form is known as rectangular form. The other is known as polar form. So imagine two axes on a plane. The horizontal axis is going to represent our real number line, while the vertical axis is going to represent imaginary number line. And this forms the complex plane. A real number is going to show up only on that real axis, where a complex number is going to show up anywhere on the plane. Now, if we have a complex number we want to represent uh, on the complex plane, and we're given a rectangular form, we just take a look and we see, well, how much of that complex number is real, how much of it is imaginary, and then we project away from these two axes, up from the real axis and out from the imaginary axis. And where these two projections intersect, that is the location of our complex number on the complex plane. Now we also might often draw a line from the origin up to that complex number and we may even include a little arrowhead at the end. Now the other form of representation is known as polar form. In polar form we're given the magnitude of this vector as well as its angle above the real axis. And we can explore both of these forms in a scientific computing environment such as MATLAB or Octave. So let's start this programming example in polar form. We're going to give here the angle theta equals pi over 6 and the magnitude we're going to call r equals 0 0.5. And we can combine these together to create a complex number. Well, x is equal to r times e to the j theta, here where j is the complex variable square root of negative 1. You may also see this written as i. We're going to use j in this text. So there we go. There's x in rectangular form. Right Here's the real part the imaginary part. And we can use MATLAB command uh, polar plot. We just pass it the angle and the magnitude. And we'll put a big old square here, make the marker size 20, so we can see where it is. We can also change some of the properties of this polar plot. We're going to set a title, which can be set using um, LaTeX commands, if you're familiar with those. We can grab uh, a handle to the axis using GCA, get current axis. And we can change the, the angle units. So let's go ahead and draw this out. There we go. Here's our plot. Here's an angle of 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. With the magnitude, you can see it's on this 0 0.5 line. So if we set the title and change the axis units, the theta axis units, to radians, Here's our title. Now we can see we are at pi over 6. And we can change the limits of this as well. So now we're going all the way out to just 1. This outside circle right here is what's known as the unit circle, because it has a radius of 1. Now, another way we can plot a complex value is by using the compass command. It's a little bit simpler. However, the compass command does not have as many configurable properties as a polar plot. Let's see. There we have it. We cannot change the axis units to radians here, so we're stuck with degrees. Now let's get the vector in rectangular form. We can do this by grabbing the magnitude times the cosine of the angle to get the projection onto the real axis, or the magnitude times the sine of the angle to get the projection onto the imaginary axis. So here we have the real part and the imaginary part, and that lines up with our complex vector x. Real part is 0.433, same as a. Imaginary part is 0.25, same as b. 
Now there are also some native commands in MATLAB that will allow you to do this. Real and imag, these will give us the same values, 0 0.433, 0 0.25. Lastly, we may want to double check our rectangular form. We can figure out the magnitude of this vector by taking the real part and the imaginary part and squaring them, summing them together, and taking the square root of that sum. We see that this returns a correct magnitude of 0 0.5. We can find the angle by taking the arc tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. This is going to give us pi over 6. Let's double check this. Pi over 6 is 0.5236 exactly what we got from our arctangent of imaginary over real. There are also some native MATLAB commands that will perform the magnitude and phase computations on a complex vector. So if we want to grab the absolute value of x, that's the same as the magnitude, that returns 0 0.5, and the angle gives us 0 0.5236, which we know is pi over 6. All right, so in our next programming example, we're going to take a complex vector and we're going to rotate it. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.